tonight we are here with joy and rage in support of Black Lives Matter Toronto and all the beautiful and resilient black bodies holding it down for over a week. Okay, I'm going to give y'all like the breakdown now of what's been happening in Toronto. So basically, Black Lives Matter Toronto 10 cities started in response to the Ontario Special Investigations Unit decision to not charge the unnamed officer who killed Andrew Loku this summer. Andrew Loku was a black South Sudanese man. He was a father of five and a former refugee living with mental illness. He was saving up to sponsor his wife and children to join him. And in July 2015, he was killed in cold blood by a trigger-happy officer while holding a hammer. They could have tasered him. They could have constrained him. Instead, they murdered him. The SIU is refusing to name and or charge the officer who committed this crime. In response, Black Lives Matter Toronto decided, no more. You can't kill us and expect us to forget. In the words of our ancestors, you gonna learn today. So for over a week, they have demanded justice for Andrew Loku. They have been protesting in the rain, the cold, and the snow. They have been attacked. Chemicals have been thrown on them. Electricity has been taken away. And still they stand. I have never been more proud to be black in Canada than this week. Our people are so beautiful and resilient, but we are also enraged. We are tired. I'm tired. We shouldn't have to organize this event to begin with. We're tired of globalized anti-blackness. We're tired of state sanctioned violence. We're tired of this white supremacist state called Canada. We're tired of having our bodies attacked. Today we're here to say, Black Toronto, we see you, we feel you, and we are here for you. Today we are here to say justice for Andrew Loku. Today we are here to say stop killing us. Today we are here to say Black Lives Matter. Life has been devalued in this country since its inception on stolen indigenous land and since the slave trade in the 1600s, including here in Montreal, anti-blackness has been part of how this country operates and is central to how Canada operates today. Um, so we're here today to stand in solidarity with Black Lives Matter Toronto, who are laying down their bodies to protect black life and fight for survival and resilience of black communities. In Montreal here, we have the second largest black population in Canada. And as we're here to support Black Lives Matter in Toronto, we also need to assert that our black lives right here in Montreal matter too. Because black lives in Montreal are no safer. Anthony Griffin was killed in 1987 um, by the Montreal police. He had an outstanding warrant and as he reached the police station, he ran away. The police yelled at him to stop and he did not. And he was shot in the back of the head. Shortly after, Montreal's black community found out that the police had been placing pictures of black people over top of their targets for shooting practice. In April 9, 1990, Leslie Presley, a 26-year-old black man, was killed. A Jamaican who was, ki uh, who was shot six times by three police agents at a downtown bar. Marcellus Francois, uh, another Jamaican, 24 years old, was killed by the police who was killed by the bullet of an M16, though he was unarmed. Again, no charges were laid. Osmond Seymour Fletcher, in 1991, uh, a 26-year-old Jamaican man, was killed by a police bullet. Trevor Kelly, in 1993, a 43-year-old black man, was shot in the back by Agent R Richard Mass. Kilem Registre was killed by the Montreal police in the 4th of October in 2007. 39 years old, he ran a stop sign and smashed into a parked car. The police subdued him using a, tater, a taser and he died four days later. These are just some examples of the horrific devaluation of black life uh, when our deaths can occur without any recourse for those who are supposedly to protect, here to protect society. Hi everybody, um, I just wanna say thank you for coming because it's, there's not enough awareness. I mean, I know what's going on in the States, but it's really, really real here. And I'm just really, really happy right now because it's just nice to know that there's this much support in Montreal for, for police brutality. And as you all know, I was a victim last year of police brutality and they broke my arm. And then they charged me with 
four counts of, uh, sorry, four criminal charges. I have two assault charges, one resisting arrest and one obstructing justice. And uh, my trial has been set and it's for next year. Um, they've gone from having two witnesses to five witnesses. So as you guys know, this is gonna be like a really intense battle and it's just really nice to know that there's this much support. And uh, I just wanna say thank you to everybody because it's really, really, thank you. Yeah. Thank we you. were supposed to come to this thing because, you know, these babies are in school and we got jobs and we're like, fuck it, this is important. We got to be here for this. So before we do a little piece, I have something to say. As an American, because yes, I am an American, I'm also the child of two African immigrants. One thing I've noticed about anti-black racism is that a lot of people like to think it's a U.S. problem. We don't got, we don't got racism up here in Canada. We got maple syrup and pickles and shit. If, if Trump gets elected, I'm moving to Canada. Why? <laughs> Don't forget the polar bears. The polar bears aren't racist. We'll just move up here. No, guys, no. It's a serious fucking problem up here. We've got indigenous people missing for no goddamn reason. We've got anti-blackness all over this damn country. And then I see people saying, oh, well, you're African. Why should you care? It's a US problem. Cops are not gonna check your passport before they shoot your ass, so I'm just telling you right now. Whether you are American, you African, continental, you from the diaspora either way. So this is your problem and it's our problem and we in it together, all right? Can, can I get an agreement on that? Can I get an amen? Okay, we do have a little song. I, I think a few people know it. It goes dreaming about the motherland. Yeah. There it is. Can y'all say that, dreaming about the motherland? Dreaming about the motherland. You know, because people say, you should just go home if you don't like it here. I'm like, okay, but this is my home now. Montreal is my home. I have people to protect here. I got people to protect in the States. I have people to protect in Africa. No matter where I go, I'm st it's still gonna be my problem. So I'm gonna fix it here, okay? While people are holding it down in Toronto, we gotta hold it down here in Montreal, all right? <laughs> Dreaming about the motherland, dreaming about the motherland, dreaming about the motherland, the motherland, the motherland, dreaming about the motherland, dreaming about the motherland, we dreaming about the motherland, the motherland, the motherland.